Marvel's Hall H presentation for Phase 4 was epic. Most people are absolutely loving everything that was on that slate. However, some fans are focusing on worries about wokeness in this next phase. I think these concerns are compounded by some mistakes that Marvel Comics has made in the past couple of years. And so in this video, we're taking the elephant in the room head on. The wokeness of Marvel's Phase 4. Is it too much? Should people be concerned? Why are people concerned? We're going to go over that and more. Comment section should be an absolute dumpster fire on this one. Here we go. It's like the news, but for nerds. Today's shout out goes to our Patreons. Patreons help us keep the lights on over here. And on top of the financial support that they've been giving us, we've actually been talking a lot as a community about politics and pop culture and some of these more difficult things that come with the territory about talking about Marvel and Star Wars and all of these awesome things. If you're interested in this stuff, you want to get sort of the behind the scenes look at our take as a company on these complicated issues, I suggest you go over and take a look at the Patreon. I even dropped a video today today going over this video and why I decided to even do it. All right, so let's get right into this. I have a feeling this is going to be a long video. There's a lot of nuance, things that I want to talk about here, but here's what we're going to do. I want to give sort of the Philip DeFranco-esque take on this. A lot of people criticize me because I'm very DeFranco-like in my fence sitting. But yeah, I'm going to sort of break down objectively why people might be upset. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give my personal take. Those of you that criticize me for not being real enough, watch the end of this video. I think you're going to be surprised. Okay, so where I want to start with this video is by mentioning that from my perspective, this is actually a very small issue currently. And what I mean is like most fans, when I look at Reddit, when I look at Twitter, when I look at the comment section here, most fans are incredibly excited about phase four, including me. Like I'm just pumped about this stuff. So the people that are concerned about wokeness, it's a small group of people at this point. Now we did live streams about this all weekend long. I suggest you go check that stuff out. A lot of fun, breaking down information about, you know, all the different phase four things. But I did see on the live streams, a small percentage of people coming in and being very concerned about this wokeness in phase four. And so that's why I wanted to do this video. In fact, I assume the usual group of suspects here on YouTube are going to start attacking this, literally saying that it's over for Marvel, the wokeness in phase four is gonna ruin everything. You know the people I'm talking about. And so I wanted to do this video also to sort of head them off at the pass, you know, kind of get the attention of people that are thinking about this issue and then give a fair and nuanced explanation of why people are upset and then talk about why I don't think they should be upset. And let me also say that I don't think wokeness is a bad word, but it's also ridiculous to not think that wokeness is a thing. Like if you look at the slate here, female Thor, the Eternals cast, which is incredibly diverse and has a lot of strong women, Tessa Thompson's subtle note to the LGBT community, the fact that Shang-Chi is going to be now the first Asian actual big time hero in the MCU, the fact that the Black Widow movie has a ton of strong women in it. I mean, it's just so obvious that there is a focus on wokeness in phase four. Again, not inherently a bad thing, but let's also not act like that's not a thing that's happening. Now, I think a big reason why some people are concerned about this is because of what's been happening in Marvel Comics over the past couple of years. Now, the best way I can say this is that Marvel Comics recently put a lot of non-white male characters into legacy roles that were traditionally held by white male characters. Some of these characters include the Miles Morales Spider-Man, a black man who is now Spider-Man when there was always a white man as Spider-Man. You've got Iron Heart, Riri Williams, who is a young black woman now taking over the role of Iron Man, which was traditionally held by a white man. You got Sam Wilson now as Captain America, which again was traditionally held by a white man. And you even have Asian Hulk, Amadeus Cho, who became the awesome Hulk. Hulk was traditionally a white man. And then of course you have female Thor, okay? White male character, legacy character of Thor gets replaced by a female. And again, not inherently bad, but let's not act like we don't know what's going on here. That's some wokeness. Now, Marvel Comics recently was also just not doing well as a company, like sales are down. It's just kind of a tumultuous time for Marvel Comics. And I think it's way more complicated than like their focus on wokeness is what done them in. But there's certainly a correlation between them making those decisions on the publishing line and the numbers going down. Again, correlation, 
not necessarily causality, but I think any reasonable person could see why a fan of Marvel Comics would see those things happening and then be concerned that similar things would happen in the MCU and that people would similarly be turned off. I'd like to believe that most people that are actually concerned about this are coming from a good place. They want the MCU to be popular. They want the MCU to continue to be embraced. This is just such an awesome thing for nerds. And I'd like to believe that many of the people that are concerned about the wokeness are actually just concerned about it not being handled the right way, which was sort of the problem with Marvel Comics. So that's why some comic fans are concerned about this, why some reasonable comic book fans are concerned about this. Now there's also a group of fans that are not too keen on Natalie Portman being female Thor, and this has less to do with the female Thor and more to do with Natalie Portman. A lot of fans have been pointing out these stories that were surrounding her around the time of Thor The Dark World, how she was really difficult to work with, this is why she didn't come back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and there's some echoing here from rumors about Natalie Portman and George Lucas in the prequel time. So some people in general are like, hey, she stuck her nose up to the MCU, it's kind of crazy that now she comes back and she is female Thor. And I know those stories are out there. I know there's a lot of smoke there, but I don't know the truth of it. I don't know what's actually going on with Natalie Portman, but I do know that is some kind of a reason why people are upset about this. There's also this factor when it comes to Thor where there are fans concerned that he's just becoming a joke and sort of a gag character in the MCU. And Hemsworth even kind of speaks to this when he comes out on stage for the phase four panel. He's talking about how Captain America lift his hammer. You know, now Jane can lift his hammer. It's like, what's special about him? He's just gonna continue to be depressed and watch Netflix. Like he literally said that, which I think is hilarious because it's kind of tongue and cheek, but I know some fans were not into Fat Thor at all in Endgame. They thought it was terrible and they wanted to see the character progress in a different way. And so when you put those kind of things together, you can see how some fans might be skeptical of Natalie Portman taking over being female Thor after some of the stories we've heard. And it's a little bit concerning when you consider what they've been doing to the Thor character. I mean, is this guy ever gonna get to shine Again, now I want to explain a little bit of why I don't think people should be concerned and then I'll like do my take on like wokeness and wokeness culture in general. So I was thinking a lot about this video last night. You know, I knew I was going to be doing this video. I talked to different people about doing this video. We talked about it on a live stream yesterday and I was really concerned. Like it's a sensitive topic. People get really hair trigger about these sort of things. And I found myself thinking over and over again last night, like what is the big difference between tokenism and representation? Representation absolutely matters, but tokenism is bad. And not only is it bad, for the people you're trying to represent, but it's bad for everyday comic book fans because part of the problem with tokenism is that there's no real depth or authenticity to it. It's simply there to check a box. And now I wanna talk about a blog post from a comic book writer, G. Willow Wilson. Now, G. Willow Wilson is the author of a lot of the Miss Marvel comics. She's written a lot of cool Marvel stuff, but mostly she's known for her Miss Marvel work. She came out a couple of years ago and did this blog post directly, you know, coming at people that were saying, that the diversity of the new line and the wokeness of Marvel Comics of the day was responsible for the lower sales number. Because as we have said before, there is a lot of turmoil in sales of Marvel Comics. Now I wanna read a couple of things that she said, and these are literally her words, but I, I think that she makes a really good point here. She says, this is a personal opinion, but in my opinion, launching a legacy character by killing off or humiliating the original character sets up the legacy character for failure. Who wants a legacy if the legacy is shitty? Diversity as a form of performative guilt doesn't work. Let's scrap the word diversity entirely and replace it with authenticity and realism. This is not a new world, this is the world. Not for nothing, but there is a direct correlation between the quote unquote diverse big two properties that have done well, like Luke Cage, Black Panther, Miss Marvel, and Batgirl, and that the properties have a strong sense of place. It's not diversity that draws elusive untapped audience, it's particularity. This is a vital distinction nobody seems to make. It goes back to authenticity and realism. And again, I think she's nailing it here, but the big thing is it's authenticity. Like that's what really matters. That's the difference between tokenism and representation. And I think ultimately what she's really saying here is that it comes down to execution. And therefore, I think the reasonable people that are concerned about the wokeness here, what they're really concerned about is the execution. We want representation. Representation matters. It's awesome. It's the flavor of this whole thing. And as a lot of fans of Marvel Comics will tell you, Marvel's been diverse for a very, very long time. And as G. Willow Wilson points out, the diverse properties at Marvel that have done the best, like Black Panther and Luke Cage, have done so because they feel like they're coming from an authentic 
place. They have a strong sense of place within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It all comes down to execution. And this is where I tell people that if they are concerned about the wokeness in phase four, they should put those worries to rest because if it comes down to execution, which I think it does for reasonable people, then you have to admit that Marvel Studios has an incredible track record of executing these things properly. Like seriously, at this point, if Marvel Studios hasn't earned your trust, you've got trust issues. That's not a Marvel, that's on you. So that's the more objective take here. That's why people are upset, you know, why I don't think they should be, but sort of a fair shake at why some people might be concerned. Now let me give you my just off the cuff feelings about wokeness in general and about everything that's going on with politics and pop culture. And I should stop and mention here, there is an open letter going out from myself to any and everybody fans of the channel and people that have never heard of us alike. This open letter is literally talking about what we do with politics and pop culture on this channel. This is something I've been working on with the Patreons a lot. So that letter will be going up on our social media and channels today. Uh, you can find that and check out my full thoughts on how we as a company approach politics and different people that have different political beliefs. But for my own take, I think wokeness and this whole conversation around wokeness is just dumb. It's just really dumb. And the bottom line is, in my opinion, most people online that are making a big to-do about all of this stuff, they don't have an actual logical base for the reasons they are thinking the way they are thinking. Like they're really emotional, not logical. Like take what happened with Ruby Rose and this whole Batwoman thing. Like at first she literally has to leave Twitter because people People are so woke online that they're berating her for not being lesbian enough to play a lesbian character. It like reminds me of the Chappelle skit when keeping it real goes wrong, like when, when keeping it woke goes wrong. Like that's, that's absurd. And then the trailer for that thing drops and it gets disliked into oblivion because the basic idea of this trailer was men bad, ma Batman bad, woman good, Batwoman good. And when you look at the comments on that trailer, there are even feminists, there are even women that are literally commenting on there saying that this is a perversion of what they believe in. Feminism, to these people, is not about downgrading men to elevate women. It is just about elevating women. It's not man bad, woman good. It's man good, women also good equally good and equally as stupid and frustrating to me are the people out there that literally just take everything they can and angle it in this way to attack wokeness and to attack this culture war but they really know they're just inciting the emotions of a different group of people these are the people that make a bajillion of brie larson videos focusing on one thing she said publicly and somehow making that into an official statement by disney and somehow making that a reason why you shouldn't enjoy the captain marvel movie yeah those people, they suck just as much as the overly woke crowd that forced Ruby Rose off Twitter. And there's probably a lot of people watching this video that falls into one or two of those camps. And I'm sorry, I just have to say, I think you suck. Like, I think you suck and I think your opinion sucks. But again, that is just my expressed opinion and not the expressed opinion of the Den of Nerds LLC. Check out our open letter for the full explanation. Whoo, that's a fun one. I'm sure you got some thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's check the nerd card before we get out of here. I want to know what is the name of the actor that will be playing Shang-Chi in the Shang-Chi movie. Total side note, I'm starting to love this guy. He's like really tongue in cheek, really funny. If you check him out on Twitter, very hilarious stuff. Got us a good Shang-Chi. But the question remains, what is the name of the actor that's playing Shang-Chi in phase four? Answer that question in the comment section below. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and I'll see you in the next video. How many subscribers do you think we're losing after this? <sighs>